Right. So let me come to you, Nancy. The mm -hmm. fact is, is that a lot of people out there are saying, well, I'm going to die, and these folks are having these experiences that go beyond the physiological state. Would you go as far as say that this is proof that there's life after death? No. Okay. Why? Tell me why. Because in scientific terms, you can't establish proof without a control group. And there's not a whole lot of people repeating this. Nobody's taking the scientists with them on the trip. No. Last time well, we checked. No. Can I jump in here? Yeah. John? I think Nancy has too high a regard for science because science can't tell you what love is. Science can't tell you why a sunset is beautiful. You see? And science cannot delve into the spiritual realm. If there is more than physiological, if there's a spirit and a soul in man, science has no equipment for evaluating this, okay? I, I think she would agree that there's right. more, but I think the answer of is there proof is what I'm going to. Dr. Weldon? Well, I just think that, that, you know, despite the issue of, of uh, you know, the definition of science, which, which can be problematic at times, you know, I think in a broad sense there is strong suggestive evidence that near-death experiences do provide evidence for a life after death. Yes. Uh, ha Habermas. Suggestive evidence. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Habermas and, uh, and uh, Moreland basically on the basis of you have a flat EEG and you have EKG that's flat and, and nothing physiologically is <coughs> happening and they come back after they've been in that exact time period and in that exact mm -hmm. time period tell you what's going on outside the hospital or at another house or give information about somebody that died in another hospital you have to say that life continues apart from the physiological processes. Something is going on. So to that extent, Howard? And there's one other piece of evidence. People's lives by the thousands are utterly, radically, totally converted, changed during a moment of extreme trauma and terror. What do you call that? It's irrational to think that they thought that up or they dreamed that up. Something mysterious is happening to people during a crisis. Somebody that puts a gun to his brain and pulls the trigger can be assured of one thing. He stopped the function of the brain cells. That's all. He hasn't ended his life. 